Okay, well, let's get started. to cut you on. Uh, the other day I asked you guys about place names, bringing a few place names in. So what did you guys come up with? And hopefully you're able to sort of find ones and you could just sort of see how the language is working within that place name. Who has one? Like a W like this? Yeah, it's um, it's K with the um, apostrophe. And yeah, and then W. Okay. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so when it when it's put together, how is it spelled? Like A S. Um, so K apostrophe high tone double A S, and then T apostrophe E I, and then H E E N A. K apostrophe w. Oh, this one. How many words is it? It looks like it's three words. Okay. Okay. So yeah, cross is a waterfall. A. Uh, the verb root for a is to hide, but this one is one of those bases, which means behind something. He is a little stream, and that's just it's a combination that. Uh, you could probably say it's heen and ak together, maybe. And then there are certain things where when you put the k on there or the k, a w will appear. And it's just, it's like a rounded thing that fell off and it, it comes back sometimes. Okay? You okay? So this is the little creek behind the waterfall? Or slocum arm. Slocum arm. Okay, cheesh. Anybody else got one? Uh oh, so. yeah. All right. Um, so I, I've got actually three that are all related to oh. this certain area. Um, Winnichich. Uh huh. Um, and Winnichich Da. How do you spell the first one? W U N A C H I C H. Okay. And then Winnichich Da. And uh, what a akhin. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what did you find? So they're all um, Corpus Island, or what we call Pleasant Island area mm -hmm. in, in uh, um, uh, Icy Straits. Um, so it's the back of a corpus. Mm -hmm. And then around. The back of the porch is the beaches around. Nice. Um, uh, and then Winnichich uh, Akhin is the the uh, creek, uh, the river behind um, the island. So the Salmon River that flows down. Okay. Um, okay. So A is behind something, but Ak is behind something going upland, oh. right? So they're they're slightly different. So. It could be, things can be generally behind something, but that talk is, it's behind it away from the beach side. So it's just, it's a pretty fun sort of little differentiation between those. Yuck, hey. And it's cheesh. And let me pull up an illustration real quick, because I think we had another. Oh, where is it? Oh, I see Chukun has one. Let me put that up in one second. Okay. Uh, all 
So here's another one, Shlokhyada. So Shlokh is Mount Edgecombe. Is that X? Not underlined, right? And so, and then Yada would be around the face of. So Yada is, whenever we say Yada and we're talking about a mountain, we're getting right up by the peak of it because it turns up into a face and Da is around. Mm -hmm. So Yada is around the peak. Shlokh comes from uh, blinking, that's a verb root for blinking. The word for a volcano in Shingit is a blinking mountain. Yutuksha. So the, it, get, it got its name probably when it erupted, would be my guess. Okay, good cheese. So this is uh, what they call the area around Mount Edgecombe. Good cheese. Any? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, on, I'm sorry, it's uh, the Taku River, and it's um, the Taku is blood of geese, and then the Haka is mouth, or, and on is town. Oh, like this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just Aku. telling it with my pronunciation. Aku on. Yake, yake. So yeah, Aku. A ka, a ka is on the mouth of, uh, and there's plenty of ways to say like a mouth of a river and, and an opening, and then on is village or land, and then a ku. When we get into place names, sometimes there's a little bit of arm wrestling that goes on with uh, place names. Flooding geese, I think, is perfectly acceptable. This is what Nora told me. King Salmon Cove is also perfectly acceptable. That's what Fred White told me. Uh, and so sometimes you can get multiple interpretations of one particular name. And as you sort of do your own language work, sometimes you have to figure out which one seems more likely in some cases. And then in other cases, you have to say, both are acceptable. Right. And so this, this, these are cases, um, is one that I've heard go both ways. And then, He's run from Shauna Kate. We get this up here. Oops, let me fix this. So I'm assuming this should be underlined. Sa anach you kuwa atkiya. Okay, and we figure out how that how that breaks down. Heel through it, that one over yonder. I don't know what kuwa atki means, but yay, place. And the uh, okay. name is place, place where, where seal hops across, and it's between Moser and Chichikov Island. Okay, place where the seal what across? Hops. Oh, yake. Yake. So, kuwa atki. And so, there's a couple of things. There's, uh, Sa, so we should see that. Anach is along it, or th it could be through it. Uh, and then there's a couple things we're going to watch for with verbs. One is if the U is long and low, and then it ends with a K, which we see turning into a G. That's a repetitive thing. Yuch atla'atki, speaking. Yuch atungi, yuch ayatunk. And what that means, it's, it's something that's happening a whole bunch, usually in the same instant. So if it's hopping, it's, you know, it's going along. Um, and then ye is the place. Yeke, so ku wa atki. Yeke, ganesh chish. What else? Oh. Oh, so, Hoots, Brown Bear, Blue Fort, and Blue, is that like the place around, place around the Brown Bear Fort? Is that? Hoots, So this comes from 
Hoots new. And that's the relational marker, like the brown bear's fort. <coughs> and then Quan is the people of. Yik eh? There's a cool one out in like Burners Bay um, on Sequoia mm. I don't know where it is exactly. Sequoia Like that? Uh, Sequoia <coughs> With a Y. Sequoia Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, it might be Sequoia I don't know. I don't remember. But. Oh, like hi. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, so this, this would be how you would yeah. spell it, right? And so th there's a couple other things. So on, you know, we see as land, sakwe would be a <coughs> verb. So the sa is the classifier. Kwe is a marker, like on kwe yi, each kwe um, I don't know what else you put a flag on. De kwe yi, maybe. And then sometimes you'll see this s apostrophe as a suffix on a vowel, or on a verb, and that is repeated in a series, like for sewing. Think of sewing, especially like you're creating some sort of pattern. And so you'll see it in certain things. Uh, it's uh, like a killer whale that's going up and down like a person sewing. It's the one up in the front. Okay. One more? Okay. I'll say it's a good one. We're, I'm not going to argue with you. How do you spell it? The second one. Oh, um. Oh, Wushdach. Okay. Password Oh, Wushdach. Yeah. Like this. I've got it spelled W U W U L I X I D I. I D I? Like that? Oh, with the key, do you? Like that? Am I not close? I X I D I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Beehive Island. Beehive Island. With the key, do you? That's how that one goes. Nice. I mean, it shows Raven doing something. Right. right. The so there's the yesh with the ch. That means Raven is doing it. Uh, dach. Wush dach means from being together. Right. So these things were together, and now they're not together. Wush <coughs> hit is one where I'll have to look up that heat. And wush kinach is the Mount Roberts, and that, that's the trails above. Yeah, kinach is to go go up and through. And then day, so whoosh ki nach day, it's the trails going up together. So let's, we're gonna, and then we're gonna look at some salmon body parts just for fun, and then we'll get back into our probably our motion verbs, but like maybe I'll give you guys a choice, maybe.
Huh. Wushahiti. See, it's to make it it's to make a trench. It's to make a it's to furrow through the land. And then, and then it also can be poking with the stick and it can be writing. Because when you're writing you're making your little furrows in the paper. Yeah, and so this is this is a really good question. There's probably some information maybe down at Sea Alaska because down at Sea Alaska they've got this whole am amazing atlas that they're working on that has they tell stories about it. The one thing I'll say is, kahuani shchana kawanig, washi kasiye at aye yawhi yani ka ye start aye asai akataswushes akataswasa. When a, something strange happens at a place, it gets named after Raven. So usually when there's something kind of weird, this, it gets, and so there's a whole bunch, we had a whole list of them. Um, oh, hold on. Shken said she found a funny one. And then we'll go back to Raven names. <laughs> uh, there's another one. Uh, <laughs> And this one has. <laughs> so th those are, you know, tukhtayi is below the butt. And it could be just the bottom of something. Um, and then tukhta usk is uh, washing the butthole. Those are, both, those are both place names that you'll see. And so, in the, and there's some places in Shingit where I think it's kind of fun, it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, Anshavu is a place. <laughs> And so I didn't name it that. <laughs> okay, let me let me see if I get a copy of this other one too. With I had Chashi Yi, Will Geiger compile a list of uh, place names that are named after Raven. I think we have them in a list. Oh, maybe we don't have all the. Yeah, they like to furrow. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just look at this one. So I've got a spreadsheet. Them. Yeah, below, below the, that's below the butt. That's true. Uh, so let me try and zoom in. <laughs> So there's a bunch, and some of these come from the Raven stories. Ashseich is resting. Sa is the verb. Ashseich um, yik kanuk hinaku. There's a whole bunch. And then we get into the yesh names. So yesh uch, black raven. Yed yesh sha, a mountain that's been ravened. Yed uh, yesh is ravened. Yesh a dak with the giti ye, place where Raven fell down. And so you can see how these ones kind of work. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, so dak with the git, dak with the git would be to fall. A verbi ye, the place where that verb happened. A verbi ye, you're going to see that together a lot. And then the verbi part would be anything that's part of the verb. So yesh a shudauta ku wu ye. So we see shuda around. So you can see this built into the verb. Sh is the beak or the nose. Da around wu ku is to wipe. The place where Raven wiped his beak. Yesh a yu a kawaji ye. Place where Raven's feet worked into the mud uh, when he pulled that salmon box ashore. Yes, ah taku wa nuku ye. A place where Raven scooted back. Yes, ah shushakai ye. And this is the place where Raven swung. This one is across from Haynes, and somebody was doing some environmental protection work, which I'm all for. But they said, you know, we're trying to build an argument against building this road from Skagway to Juneau. We found this place called Raven Swings, place where Raven swings. 
is that because of earthquakes? I was like, no, no, it's just because there's a series of raven stories and he did something up there. I don't know the whole story, but they're, they're connected with a whole bunch of other place names in the area. And he said, I'll just say there's earthquakes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, don't ask me next time. Yes, <laughs> Achjiish, um, place, uh, father of raven being heard. Yes, Achji, like you're hearing a, a raven, a person is hearing a raven. Yes, Cha De, section above a trail. Yes, Da Ahu, this is in the Chilkoot River, raven's dry fish bundle. Uh, Zuna is a missile. So Zun is a verb root to missile things at people because you could throw things and because it's clinket you could throw them a general thing you could throw a bunch of things you could throw something so hard it falls apart and scatters you could throw water you could throw people and then you could throw things like a missile uh raven's rapids <coughs> raven's mat Yeah, and you can get, what do you get up on there? There's some kind of plant that you go up there to pick. I can't remember what he told me. But he liked he liked that one a lot. This one's over by Haynes. Raven's poop. Katush is to make a, to drill something. Shwidatush is... Raven did that. He spun himself around in a circle. Yishkawut, that's also a name for Yishkawuti, is also coral. Yishkinde um, Akawatsechiye, place where Raven was kicking up, probably when they took his beak off. So you see, there's a bunch of them with Yish. Yishtegi, Yishkhe, Yishkhini, Yishyaktei. So it's really fun to just sort of explore these and to go into the place name book now armed with a little bit more knowledge on how these things kind of work. So let's oops, let's get back into some of these uh, little parts and then adding parts to these other parts. And we'll go back to motion verbs. And, and then once we're done with this slideshow, then we'll, we'll, the plan is to move through as many chapters of beginning clink as we can. There's only two or three left. So we know there has to be something in front of that, right? Like a, nadak, te, and then you say ka. Ka. So when you add dach on it, you get ka dach. Or ka. Ka de. Ka nach. That's the one I hear most commonly. And what you got to pay attention to is what happens with the tone. There's a few odd cases where it just goes totally low. And that there's no, I don't have a good explanation for it. There's these things that they usually do, but then we occasionally we have to read from the Book of Exceptions. <laughs> Cut. Kawu. Kuch. Ka. Kuch. So there's these other things you could say. I would say shingitani, shingitani. So if you say something on the world, you say shingitani ka. So that is on the world. Shingitani tukwani. That's people of the world. But it translates as like the people of the inside of the world. So, you know, there's just little things that you'll, you'll notice. Uh, kach. Tu. So this is inside of something. Kach is on. Tu is inside. Tu dach. Tu dach. Tu day. Tu nach. Tu t. Tu wu. Tu uh, okay, so now here's some other of these bases, right? So when we say they're relational bases, that means you can put a suffix on them, right? Da, da, ka, ge, 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 in, e, t, e, t, g. Uh, 
is a couple. Daka, you, it's, you can't, that's a noun. You can't put anything on that. In already has something on there. So you can't have two suffixes. In, the, in these types of suffixes, you can't. Uh, ge, if it has a tilde on it, that means it, it usually doesn't appear without a suffix. Because there's some of them, you don't see them without a suffix. That one usually has the T or the DE. Wushgate, wushgate. Uh, so this one has a sound that's kind of faded. There's some speakers in Teslin and Yakutat, at least there used to be, who, uh, who made this sound and it's <coughs> fallen out of the language. So this is one word that appears in three different ways. And you'll see it in a bunch of different things when you start looking for it. Nya. Nya. Yina. Yina. Nya. So it had this nya, this gamma, sort of this nasal sound that we don't have anymore. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, Hinya, Sanya, Nanya, um, uh, Hit Dayina Day is let's go down, go downstairs, right? Hit Dayina. So Dayina. Uh, I think there's a place near Skagway. Yak, Yak Dayina. The vicinity can mean just the area of, the direction of, towards that. Uh, Shaki. Shu Yi Shu Shu Wu Ta Yi Yi Talk Han So Han is usually next to uh, a person. It's usually some kind of living thing. It's most often a person. But I've seen it used with uh, not people too. Ah. Ak, a, eka, wakshi, t, yik, one. So these are some like the the ak next to, ak behind and upland from, and then sometimes ek, very similar. So just and then eka. So there's some that are just sort of, they just got little, they're, they're different, so they're different words, but then the meanings are sometimes really close. Wakshiyi would mean in front of people. So this could be like bringing things out, speaking in front of people, like public speaking. Um, and then yik we talked about is a shallow container open to the above. Uh, and there's a few things, you know, so the, the river is a big thing that you yik into. When you get into bodies of water, it gets a little different. One is the edge of something, especially a body of water. Dot. Dot. Kaya. Kwan. Nak. Say What? Okay. I think with a little John reference there, but this one is really interesting. So it means like something, resembling something, but there's this very important clinket phrase, and they'll say, How would we translate that? I'll, I'll write it right here. Oops, cha a kaya ye gach tu sane. Somebody take a stab at translating that. This is a really important phrase in Klinket. Cha a kaya ye gach tu sane. The, how about ye gach tu sene? Anybody recognize that? So ye gach tu sene means we're going to do this. We're going to do the thing, right? We're going to do it. We're going to fix it. The, it's sort of like when you say, wasa uh, atwune. 
what happened? So atbune is something happened. Wune would be something happened. And we know we know this verb in various sort of forms, right? So you could say wa sa at wune. That's a question, just to say what happened, right? Like let's say we came in, the tables were upside down, the chairs were all over the place, right? Wa sa at wune, right? There's another form of this verb, verb that we we use. Hechwasa. Um, this is a sort of good way to say it. Hechwasa kukwane idat. And this means, and, and so the direct translation would mean sort of like it's not how it's going to happen around you, but it really translates to you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Nothing's going to happen to you. That's how that translates, right? When we switch the classifier to an S, now it's not something happening, it's someone doing something. So, for example, you say, Ye au sene. He, usually that translates to he or she fixed it. They did it, they made it, right? Ye nasne is do it. It's a command form and it could mean clean the table, do the dishes, clean your room. It has to do with sort of fixing things. Yanu ne, it's ready. These are all related forms of the same sort of verb root. When you say, the literal translation would be we are just going to be like it we're gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna do something that resembles it the cultural translation of this phrase we are on, we are just going to imitate our ancestors and it's a really interesting phrase to me because it's so kind of linguistically vague and I remember I said this uh, to Nora and she was she just really likes this phrase this is a really like deep cultural sort of thing and so sometimes when we learn these little things we got to see how they stack up and they become these kind of bigger things Uh, so we did these. Here's the suffixes. Dach is from. De is towards. Qa is along or going after. Nach is going through or along. Uh, the T is to arrive at. The Nach is to keep coming back to or move around at. Yeh, we talked about that. So here's a couple of place names in here. Atwugu di yeh would be the place where somebody walked around. Wudzidukru uh, yeh is a cotton wooded place. Duk is a place name, or is a noun, that's a cottonwood tree. And then, Ade Atwagudiye, the way that he or she walked around. Ade Hai Atwagudiye, the way that we were taught. Uh, that came from Cyril George. So these are a bunch that are sort of in uh, the place where. You know, from the Skagway, Chilkoot kind of area, Chilkat area. Um, and let's just say these names. Jishkat. Tukon. Khashakachini. Daksha. Shkut A. Kuwakan Teye. Did we talk about why that's Teye from Te? Anybody know why it becomes te? Possession. Yeah, it's possession. And when you put a suffix onto a short high vowel, it will usually go long and low. Yeshta'ahu. Shashaki. Ashaki Yandestakye Kutaska Shanach Ayi Shanachini Shanachini Ak 
Kut Shkagwe Yak de Yinya Nak Nak Heen De Ya De Ya Heen De Ya Kakas Uhini Tekha yilhetu Chakukh anakhtil adiyya Tuch ayi Nadasha hini That's what somebody told me who's from there but Natasha hini is also what they call it so I don't like to argue with people about their own place names. Artlane. Daisleen. Ark. Katini. Kachdekuwuhin. Kachsatanjin. Ark Tark. Anchkashtu. Oops. Anj Kasu Akta Akta Sit I notice there's an apostrophe missing here, so then I end up pinching that thing while I was typing it. That was fun. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Have a chance to ask questions about our letter, like things that we run into that we're struggling with. Yeah, let's do that after the break. Okay. So we'll we'll do a little bit of motion stuff. We'll come back. We'll take our break, and then we'll do Q and A based on the things that you're working on. Um, okay, Shkun. At busku da kahiti. Ach kai atestu ye. On ka Nase Uch da kahiti The two uch da kahiti Jindahag uch da kahiti Atcha da kahiti Dana da kahiti Nak da kahiti Atkan hiti Sek da kahiti Sek hit Hun da kahiti Hagak da kahiti Kanesti hit Good day, Sayanikat. Where's he go? Or she go? Shkun day, Yanakat. So now, good day, Sayanikat. So we go from Yanakat to Yanikat. Good day, Sayanikat. Let me give me a place. Kuch da kahiti de yan chakut. Okay. Good day, sir. Yan chakut ish. Where's your ish going? Chakach da kahiti de yan chakut ish. Ach at Hande Yen Hagat Ach Silk Hande Yen Hagat Good Ach Sayan Hagat At Han Hitti Dachyan Hagat so what we're focusing on here is we're changing the suffix, we're changing the subjects. 
we're listening for the subject, we're listening for the suffix, and we're responding with the appropriate suffix, right? So you could take a little, uh, I think I made a little board of this little town. So I made all these little illustrations and I got some of them, but then I've got a printout of this one which is on k, and so they're all here. So my idea was you could take a little card and there's a little smokehouse or the little, this is yen I don't think we did that, did we do that one? Yen shuka. Yen shuka. So yen shuka is camp. And yen, the smokehouse is probably at camp, but whatever. Maybe they're close to, each, close to each other. But then you can have a little card with the person walking. You have a little card with the person running. You can have a little card with the person riding a bike. And you can have a little card with the person in a car. So those are the main ways you can sort of get around. They can fly too, right? Because now you can get tax deductions on your private jets, so good for you. Okay, so we did those. Thank you for that. Yeah. And of course, it's just with the one that is. You know, just throw it out there. Godasa yani gut. Hundaka hiti de dach. Oops. Hundaka hiti dach yani gut. You cannot stack your suffixes, I just did. I'm going to from the store. Gudaksa yanakuti tla. Gudaksa yanakuti tla. Ach ad handach yan chagat. So what we're getting is like going to, coming from, going to, coming from, right? This is all, could all be part of a conversation too. Where are you going? Where you, you know, you're getting a little nosy, but where are you going? Where are you coming from? And then, uh, so now we're going to go, oh, there's the pattern. So now we've learned these kinship terms too. So the kinship term could sit in there. I, I'm coming from visiting my brother, mother, father. So now we're going to go by boat or car. Yanakuch. So yanakut. Yanakuch. So we're going to see is everything's going to be the same except for the the verb root. All the other stuff in the front is going to stay the same. Yanikuch. Yanchakuch. Yanakuch. Yanikuch. Yan Hakuch, Yan Hakuch, Yan Hakuch, Yan Hakuch, Yan Dakin, Yan Dakin, Yan Dakin, and this is for a single bird or people in a plane. Okay. Yeah, Yan Dakin, Yan Dakin Dei, or Yan Dakin Drive, but I think they have it. Yanduk, yeah, it's Yandukin, right? Yandukin. Right? So it's just, we just got to make a slight adjustment, and then we've got it. But then you'll see, because this one has a vowel in the classifier, it's a little different. So instead of saying Yanikuch, we're going to say Yanidukin. 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 Yanachdukin. Ya nachtakin. 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 So this verb root is to see. So it's like you're, you're just seeing places. That just means to travel. Because otherwise you're specifying that mode of travel. You could also say ya nachtakin for a lot of things. You know, you say ya nachtakin. Even though, who knows how they got here, right? It's just you walked in the door, so that's good enough, right? So ya kunetin, ya kunitin, ya kunchatin. So even if you put this thematic prefix on there, it's still ni, ncha, and na, right? So there's it, the patterns are there. Right? The more we practice this stuff, the more those patterns start to sit within us. How we start changing the subject. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, is that like the aerial? 
Like it is. The aerial clue at 10, so around looking? Yeah, looking at spaces. So that's just traveling. Maybe you said that, but I sometimes have two or three thoughts running through my head, and I can't focus on everything. You okay. can <laughs> Sorry, would you say traveling together, Yaku Mushkin? Oh, so traveling together, you could say what you would do is you would change the subject, would go plural. So instead of yakun khatin, it's a yakun tutin. Kun tutin. So the tu is right there. All the other motion verbs, most of them, it would it would change. For example, we're going to go, I'm going to the store, or let's just say I'm going there. Or I'm going there right now. Adeyan chakut. Adeyan chakut. We're going there. Adeyan to at. Adeyan to at. So if, if we're doing it kind of separately but to the same place, because if we're, I'm driving there. Ade yan chakuch. Ade yan chakuch. We're driving there. Ade yan te, ade yan te kuch. Ade yan te kuch. Right. Any other questions? Running. Yan eshich. Yan eshich. Yan eshich. If you're the Yaktat people, <coughs> Yaktat people, Yanashkich. So the verb root is he. But in a lot of, there's a lot of things because it's an sh and shkich is a little bit difficult to make. That first one usually falls out. It's just something that happens. Yanishkich. Yanishkich. Yan Hashik Yan Hashik So this is another one when it goes plural it's different, right? But this is one person, we'll just stick with one person. Yashkanatsech 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 I mean, uh, wait, I gotta, I gotta show you guys this. Because that one's kind of fun. I gotta show you something real quick. It's like picking the yourself. Kicking yourself. It is kicking yourself, right? <laughs> I made that because it's kind of funny. Okay. Yashkan chaltech. So the other thing to do is to sort of see the parts, right? Ya is part of the progressive, right? That sh is somebody's doing it to themselves. K is a lot is the horizontal surface. N is also part of the progressive. It's in this process of happening. Ch is me, and then we get the l classifier, and then sech is the root. Sech is to kick. Okay, we'll do these, and then we'll take our break. So there's a bunch of stuff that can pop up in what we call the preverb. And the preverb can be a couple different things. So this is the word right before the verb. Sometimes it has meaning, sometimes it just has grammatical function. Right? And so here are some ones that have meaning. Yay. 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 So yay is sort of like light, it just means like this. For example, you say, Ye chat duasak. I am called this, right? And so you're saying it's this specific sort of thing. Ye chat yeti. That's how I am, right? And so whenever you see the ye in there, high tone, and sometimes it kind of has to be in there. 
Yedayaka. That's how they. That's how the person said it, because you're really specifying the the. the you know, there's something specific that you're really talking about. Uh, now to completion, there's two options here. Yach. Yeah. Yach. Yeah. It's got to be low tone, right? And then the other option to say the same thing is yan. Yeah. Yan. Yan. Yeah. Now we've seen this one. This is all part of that. Yanagut. Yaqanatin. Ya is along. It's this progressive sort of thing. And it pops up. It doesn't really have meaning in those <coughs> verbs that we were looking at. It's just signaling. It's putting the verb into a certain mode. Yay. Yay. Downward. K. K. Upward. And then there's certain verbs. You'll see those pop up. Like this is the one that you see in suye ikkwasatin. It's only there because the verb's in the future mode. And the verb has certain qualities that requires that thing to pop up. Kek kwak e. It's going to be better. That K has to pop up in that case. Yek. Down to the shore. Dak. Up from the shore to the inland. Dak. Out to sea. From the shadows out into the open. Falling from the sky. Oh, we, oh, we did that one already. Yan. Yach. You. Back and forth, to and fro. You khatan. Talk. You khatan. So you see this one pop up in a lot of repetitive forms. When they see the you in there, it's often talking about something that's happening uh, repeatedly all at once. Ha. ha, over in this, over in this vicinity, neil, inside of a building, kuch, to return, kut, to get lost, and you can also say kut which literally means like I threw it and it got lost, but that's like something that you know but that you just can't remember. Ye nakut. It's going down. Ke nakut. It's going up. Ye nakut. It's going to the beach. Dak nakut. It's going up to the forest. Dak nakuk. Going out to sea. Kut ke nakut. He or she is getting lost. They're on their way here towards us. They're coming back. He or she. Right. Okay. That's probably enough. That's probably fill in the head. Okay. Uh, let's take five, six, seven, eight, five minutes or so, come back and then we'll do any questions you guys have on your letters or your projects and then we'll, we'll keep powering through the beginning clinking. So the, the last thing from this chapter and then we'll do our Q&A is sort of uh, looking at some, some different uses of the question particles that we've already looked at. So. You can see the English on the right-hand side. So, and again, sometimes you'll have things that come in between the first part and the second part. So the sa is the closing part of forming the question, right? So just repeat after me. You've, you've seen these before. Da sa. Da sa. Da sa. Wa sa. A do sa. Gu sa. Kunsa, Kutkinsa, or Gutkinsa, Quatksa, Gutksa, Dot Yissa, Dot Kasa, Wanaksa. So there's this other little particle. Ah. And it doesn't appear by itself. 
right? It always has to attach to something, although it can be at the beginning of some sentences, right? Cha'akaya yegachtu sane. It's right there. But when you put it in front of one of these, these things, and then it becomes this sort of noun, right? Cha'adasa would be just whatever. But there's a lot of times with that dasa, it doesn't always signal a question. For example, they might be talking about all these hides that were in a room. They'll say, uh, So the dasa on the end, you'd say, lynx skins and wolf skins and moose hides and whatever, right? So it's just saying, uh, and these other things. So dasa could come at the end of a list like that to mean, and a whole bunch of other things. Adasa would mean whatever, right? Adasa etu asugui koti. So that's one thing I say to my kids. Adasa etu asugui koti. Just think it you enough. Think it enough. I say whatever you want is going to happen. Just say it and clink it. Adakasa. Right? Mm-hmm. So there's some soda pops up here or apples or whatever. Which one do you want? Chadakasa. Whichever one, right? Chawasa. However. And this is one that could be it, it doesn't always have a negative meaning. Because someone might say, How do you want me to write it? Chawasa, however, whatever way. But sometimes you could say, Chawasa ayaya sausani. They just did it any old way. It could also be translated like that, too. So you got to be kind of careful with that, because it could mean kind of recklessly. A kugeyi is really recklessly, but that could be interpreted. How do you spell that? Really recklessly? Ah. Kugeyi. Ku is long, gay is long, and yeah is short. Gay is high. Yeah is short. Okay. So that isn't the same, however, that you would use like, I like you, however, I don't know. Okay. right? Kua. However, as like any which way. <coughs> Cha adusa. So whoever. Cha adusa du tawasagu akakweyi ak in ayakakishagao. Whoever wants my coffee, you're going to fight with me, right? Chagusa. <laughs> Wherever. And there was this time I was visiting with Wushjahu uh, Ish, George Ramos, and he's got on his four wheeler and we're at a culture camp in Yakutat. I said, Sia Kwasatin. He turns like, Chagusa. And then he just took off. Chagunsa. <laughs> However, many. Chakwatkinsa. Whenever. Chakwatkisa. Chadatyasa. Chadatkasa. Chawanaksa. I've never heard that last one, ever. So I don't know if people would say that. And then if you put kesh uh, in front of some of these, they also mean something a little different. They turn into a noun. Keshdasa. <laughs> Nothing. But then if you use that in front of a verb, the verb tends to go negative. It's a really interesting thing. So we were talking, me and my uncle, about some people that we disagreed with. And he said, Keshdasa has I was like, ooh, they don't know anything, right? Keshdasa. Uh, None of them. Keshwasa. That one's special. It just means okay. Fine. It's going to be okay. Keshasa. Keshgusa. Okay. And then here's some examples of how you can use some of these in a sentence. Okay, who's got some questions? Guk. So, um, I was trying. So to find a way to say like I miss you or I miss seeing you or I miss being with you or any, but I couldn't quite think of how 
I couldn't find a verb from to miss. Mm -hmm. um, and I just did this whole, spent a whole lot of time trying to find another way of saying it, and I can't really think of anything. So there's a few, there's some different ways that I know. I'm, let me make that bigger. So this one is, uh, I'm lonely for you. Iqa, i i qa. So the i i is this postpositional pronoun. Qa is after. I i qa khatu khatish. Isakhwaha. Isakhwaha. That's, I'm missing you. And so, because it also means I want you, right? And, and so, but usually it depends on the context when you're going to use stuff like this, because you also got to put some context into it, because if you say too many of these things, uh, and, and the context might be correct, but people might assume that somebody died, right? And so, um, those are some things. And then, uh, so, and would that be appropriate, would that be appropriate for like just a friend that you haven't seen in a really long time? Yeah, Isakhwaha, that would work. It might be, might be a little heavy, um, but yeah, I think it would work. is probably, like I'm just lonesome, I'm kind of bored without you. The sakhwaha is pretty, it's pretty deep, yeah, but it could work, like you're really missing somebody, yeah. There's a... It should be two A's. There's a sakhvet an, or sakhvet an, mm -hmm. like really, like... Oh, really? Yeah. And it eats sakhvet an. Like this? Sakhvet sakhvet. Oh, uh, glitan? Yeah. I think it's sah glitan. Like what tell him sa. Like that? Mm, without the high tone over the A. Oh, the other A. Oh, whoops. Yeah, where'd that come from? Oh, what's this other one? I'll have to find, there was another one I knew too. The, the third one in the list, um, uh -huh. how, what is, how does that mean? That's, uh, I'm needing you, like I, I need you, um, and so that's another way to be lonesome for somebody. And it's not, there's ways to say that, because, um, you know, And this is a little bit different. That's, I want you. And that's getting into the little bit of a <laughs> fisky, shall we say? Let me find, I was having a conversation with Shakao Ish about it. Let me see what you find. <laughs> Not about wanting him. <laughs> there it is. Then I think. There's another one, which is Tawa'as. And this is to be um, I have to look at this one more, though, because I've only seen it used like this. Um, longing to see. And then, so that one I think I would say yach etachwa us, but I have to check just to see whether, because some of them you'll you'll see there's most of these they don't have actual objects. It's what we call indirect objects. So the the objects is when there's a straight pronoun. 
I call you this, right? They call me Bruce. But then like the i'it, i'iqa, it's an indirect object. It's put, bouncing it outside of the verb, which is just something that's just kind of interesting. Did you say that was yach etawas? I think yach etawas. I think, but I'll, I'll have to look at it more. And sakhwaha, e sakhwaha is I'm, I'm lonely for you. And that's usually a pretty deep kind of, a lot of times if you're using that one, uh, people might assume that that person has passed away. Is that the fourth one? The second, the second one. one. So, mm -hmm. I'm lonely for you. I'm wanting you to be around me. No, yay, right? Sorry. I need you. Uh, what would you say that one was like? like wanting to see somebody. Wanting to see you. I want you. us. <laughs> he or she is longing to see him or her. I want to just say like, um, and like to my mom, would I add pla at the end? Yeah, you usually say, it depends, if you're writing directly to her, mm -hmm. a lot of times you just say, you can just say atle. Atle is like directly, so A-T-L-E-I, high tone on the E. Atle. Yeah. And that's, that's like saying, mm -hmm. mommy, as opposed <laughs> to my mom, right? But you can say atle, you do that one too. But atle is what you say directly to the mother. And I had so, so my letters to a dear friend, my best friend that I haven't seen in a really long time because she lives on the other side of the country. And so I kind of want to ask questions like, Are you still friends with so and so? Do you still live? And I found I think for still. Oh, but yeah. I don't know. I'm like sticking it in all these questions. Like, I still like to, da da da. But I don't oh. know if it's really used in that way. For, so. To, to say that we're still doing this thing that we used to do, or are still seeing this person that I used to see from the past? So I would say it like this. Mm. That's how I would ask it. So yesu at the end means still. And to Yesu, you know, Yesu could also mean right now. But a lot of times, Yesu, at, Yesu before the verb usually means right now. Yesu after the verb means still. At this, you know, is it still this way? And then you could put the person's name. Or you could say, Or, you know, Yesu. And Yesu, he can remember because. I was in Hawaii and they kept saying Yesu in these songs. I was like, what's still happening? And they're like, that's how we say Jesus. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus is he's still happening. <laughs> Sorry. So, so then what is the C-H? So ch is a particle. And it means, it, you'll see it added to other things. So ch uh, chashugu. And, and it's hard to translate on its own. It kind of means like, the very. So, that so Yesu would, would mean like just now. Okay. Just right now. But Yesu at the end would mean still. Okay. Any other? All right, let's look at this real quick and then we'll see if there's any other questions. I did say that there's something uh, different about the back of uh, salmon body parts. So it has a kuwu for a tail. It has a kweyi for the back fin, which is a marker. Kadeyi, the road along it is that line that goes through the salmon. Dikatawu, the feather on its back is the large dorsal fin. Datawu is the name for all of the fins. It means the feather around it. Daachayi is another word. It means the paddles around it. Shitkagutli, shitkagutli. So sheet is a ridge, 
sheet kan is on the ridge, uh, so it doesn't have a. We have shedik, which is the back of our neck, um, and they have a sheet, which is a, a ridge, as a shell, like we do. Echu is the gills, walk like we do, like we do, like we do. Nuchi is this little meaty part underneath, in between the jaw bones. It's delicious. Tawu uh, is just this one feather right behind the gills. Jeke is the, uh, the scales. Detsake is this bottom one, which has bones around it. Khasi is its skin, which is different than people's skin. Katawu uh, is the, the anal fin, I think they call it. And kawus is the base of the, of the tail. Uh, how would you talk about someone who's passed? So when, when you're talking about people, you say, ye do a sock for him or her. But if you're talking about somebody who has passed away, you say, ye do sagan. So this is what we call a decessive marker on a verb. It means it's not like that anymore. So as soon as, if a speaker hears you say someone, like I could say, skanda u ye do sagan ahish, they know my dad has passed away. They know that. So whenever you say ye du sagan, um, if you needed to give it context, like they took somebody's name away or something, which is, they're practically dead anyways, as far as Klinkit culture is concerned. But um, those types of things usually don't happen now. But ye du sagan would be how you, and so just by saying that, uh, and then you could say those other things, you could say chaku ayi, the one of long ago, Wunayi'ah, uh, the one that passed away. Hanakwugudi'ah, the one who walked away from us. There's some different ways you could talk about it. It's usually, wh whenever you have death in, in Tlingit, it's something that's really talked around. So you got to be really careful with those types of things. And, and there's, animals are important, but animals, it's usually, you know, like you can say, Akhdush wuna, because it's a little bit different. And, and if somebody really loves their cat, and sure, but usually you talk about people's deaths a little bit, a lot more, it's a lot more sensitive. Any other questions? Um, what's our best way to get feedback on like our drafts? I just shared a Google Doc with you, but I wasn't sure if that is how we should do it. Or bring That's a good idea, because then I could add notes. A, a Google Doc is a good idea, or an email. Uh, it might take me a couple days. If if I don't respond to you, feel free to just send a what my my master's thesis advisor used to call it a nagogram. She's like, I'll send you a little nagogram. Right? Feel free to send me a reminder, and don't be offended. Sorry, it's just it's that time of year. Everything's ramping up for everybody, but I do want to be there to help. Um, I like the idea of collaborating. I like the idea of you making language and giving it a shot. And then I'm happy to look at it and give you some feedback, and it starts to fit in. One of the things that tends to happen too is as we learn some of these bases, so we say ada, like ada yuchachdata. I was talking about it, but then if you say kate, I was talking about a dog. You wouldn't say kate ada yuchachdata, kate da yuchachdata. So the noun can take the place of that pronoun. So just keep that in mind. Um, like so, so G or whatever, can you use that for time? Or like, I never have enough time. Um, it's probably, it's probably manufacturing concepts from English to clink it. But then, um, you know, because the, this and this happens, and sometimes you've got to sort of push, force, force the issue. But so with the G, so you could say ach G, so my possession. So if we started with ach G, right? So you might say ach G wo, I have it. Kesh ach G. And now that we've worked with suffixes a little bit, you should see how these are working. So the wo gets added, and then it doesn't appear because it's not there. So that wo means is or are there. So then you could say, I would say this. Well, 
Whoops. Oops. The time ran out of my hands. I, I would, and so it's it's really not an, about like, because you don't really have time, but it's still like you you can kind of run out of it. Um, or there's different ways you could say it. You could say uh, to not have enough time, and some other things. Those are really interesting to try and get those to work in 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 Shingit. It seems to me like you just need more of a context. Like, I tried, but I didn't make it. I didn't get it done. Um, and so I'll, I'll ask some of the old folks about it and see what they have to say, like, for time. Because you could watch, like, it's too short. Um, those types of things. Uh, but then there's other things that you could just sort of, so you could be saying, like, you know, I'm always working. Right? I, I'm I'm always working, but my but my life is chaotic. And then, the, the, you know, so the the chut yacheti just means like it's like a whirlpool all around. There's just stuff all around me all the time. So it, it doesn't have to necessarily reference time because I think English is all about time, right? And it's like, and, and I think Clinkett at some point will probably get there once we get our immersion school and everything. We have to shift the way that we sort of talk about these things. But you know, I have time. I don't have time because a lot of people they they'll say. I'm like, eh, it's kind of weird. Like, Thanks for giving me your time. It's like giving me your drum. And so I would prefer something like Thanks for being with me. Thanks for helping me. And just maybe if we move away from some of those time references, maybe we'll think about it a little differently too. So, and, and along those lines, if you were trying to say, um, like, I, lo I lost track of time, you're doing something and you're really engaged and it's, oh, two hours has gone by. And that, like a more clinket way of thinking about that would be something like, you know, I got lost in my thoughts or, I mean, to get away from the time, like we always think of things as time, like time right. passed, but something else is happening there. You're, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. a different way of saying the same thing. So, the, yeah, there's some things that you could do. Like, so one of the things you could do, um, and this one is pretty powerful. So you say, which literally means like it appears like, it just appears like it, but it means it's as if. It's as if. Uh, I would probably say something like this. And maybe something like It's as if I just got lost on my book. Right? I was just, just wandering out and in, into it. Because means to just like really go astray. Right? And so that, but and, and it depends on what the context of some of these things. Like and these are some things where we're getting into it would be great to bring some fluent speakers in and to talk to them and, and we'll just do the best that we can and then these might be things we figure out later that there's better ways to say it but you know some of these things um, uh, they'll, they'll challenge us and our con concepts of how these things work in terms of how we think about them in English and also how we would think about them in Shingit. So. That would mean uh, it's as if you got lost. I got lost in my book, but could you could also say that in my like playing guitar or painting? I mean, like those creative things where you just kind of like zone out. So yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess you might even say like It's like I really swam to the bottom of this drawing. Right. So you could you could kind of push the metaphor. Cool. I just wanted to say I really agree so much with what you just said before around especially time and um, I, I'm lucky enough to know quite a few different kinds of languages and I think that's one of the beauties. There's been such a 
such thing as a true translation be ever? And if you're working on building another way to say things, it's so nice to try and keep what is really the traditional language and where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. it's learning a language uh, makes like a different part of your brain and you get to know a different part of yourself in a way because it's right. not like a direct translation. So I think it's really great that you're, you're not just immediately translating exactly what someone would say from one totally different concept of how you did. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. <laughs> and here's here's an so you say tuk achtu achtu wasigwech. I'm always wanting. I always want that. And then it could be like kachnigwatli to be painting, kachshikiti to be writing, yana khush tuchlaani. We're all nicer to each other. Okay. Yak a. the next chapter. So what this chapter is doing is like moving into verbs with a focus on action. So now what the thing that we want to do in this chapter is build our inventory of verbs. And as you guys are writing your letters and doing your projects, feel free to email me, feel free to bring some things on Thursday. Thursday we're going to try and wrap up beginning clink it. We're going to retire. <laughs> Uh, intermediate clinker, I think I want to, for this next semester, I'm going to try this thing. Where on Tuesdays, I'm going to see if I can stick with it. On Tuesdays, we're going to learn grammar stuff, going further with these verbs. But I think for the Thursday class, I'm going to have you guys bring some topics. We're just going to try and stay in the language for two hours. And that's just our goal. And you'll have a topic, and we'll talk, and I'll try and bring some folks in here who can talk with us, too. But we're going to try not to break out into... Because second semester of intermediate clinket, that's the time when we should start be pushing ourselves into the language. In Hawaii, by this point, they're done with English, and we're not there yet. Because we're gonna need, this, we still gotta build some structural things. But I think that way is half, kind of, analyze it. Because the the danger is you learn a lot about the language, but then when it comes to actually manufacturing the language, it, it's hard, and so. This is the goal is to try and keep ourselves from being um, too classroomy, you know. But for now, so let's look at this. Okay, so now this we're talking about what is he or she doing, and this was something that's really fun. So Clinket always has these fun things because we asked Nora, we're like, okay, there's two ways to say what are you doing. So here's one of them. What's the other one? Anybody know? That's a ye dot ye ne. Okay. We say, but how do you know which one to ask? And she says, well, it depends on what they're doing. <laughs> so, like, so you gotta know what they're doing before you can ask what they're doing? She's like, yeah. It's like, I'm gonna think about that for a little while. So. But this is the general one, because it really has to do with behavior. Like, how are you behaving in this space? But again, it's just kind of, we're always careful with the literal translation of things. Because wasaqhi yinuk really just means, what are you doing? What are you up to? Dasa ye da'ine is like, what are you working on? So if someone's working on something, that's the, that's the other one. So there's two different ways. One is just sort of generally, what are you, what are you doing? What's your action? What are you doing? And then the second one is what are you working on? Okay. So to ask what he or she is doing. Wasakuwanuk. 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 So we get the zero the I and the kha. So we see how these are changing, right? And so we've got the kha on there again. There's that aerial thing hanging out. Now we get to start looking at these things a little bit more too on how we sort of list a verb, right? So the verb, you get the yay, which means 
it's optional. If it's in parentheses, that means it's optional. <coughs> it's showing you that there's a thematic prefix <coughs> that's on there. It means there's some space. Capital S, there's a subject. Zero, that's a zero group classifier. Nuke is the verb root. Little number four means there's at least four different nuke verbs that are out there. That each means something different. This is this one. And then underneath it will say, for S to behave, do, act in a certain way. Right? So now, this is, what is he or what am I doing? So, you know, maybe I'm doing something and you're supposed to tell me. So this is something, there's games you can build with this. And these could be similar to charades, things like that. Well, now you're going to learn, we're going to learn this whole string of verbs. I'm verbing, you're verbing, he or she is verbing. Right? Most of these are also going to have no objects. So you don't have to worry about the object. The focus is really to look at the subject. Okay? The first one is sitting. So we get this is a positional verb. Positional verbs, so there's very few of them. And that means you really don't say it any other way than this. This is the only, you don't say like, there's no future forms, there's no perfective, none of, none of that stuff. It's only to be that way right now. And this sitting isn't just sometimes just sitting, right? It's sitting and contemplating? The, there, there are related verbs to this, which is to meditate, yeah. to look at the weather. But, and so they're, they're, they're related to the verb root. But this particular, when we say, Verb root, that's the ah, and then there could be a bunch of verbs that are built off of it. Okay. The way that we build verbs off of a root is we could change the classifier, we could change whether there's an object and a subject, and we can add thematic prefixes, and then we can put stuff in the preverb. Those are the ways that we change verbs. Yeah, but there are other ones to, to meditate, to sit thoughtfully. And then there's a, a motion verb, nuke, which is a different nuke than that last one, which is the act of sitting, right? Anu, sit down. But that's different than to be seated somewhere, right? So she or he is sitting. Ah, 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 e ah, e ah, ha ah, ha ah. So if I said, wasaki nuke, you would say, ha -a. Ha -a. Okay. So, to stand. And so this isn't stand up, right? Although there's a related, so you'd say, gidan, which is a contraction of gidahan. Right? But just to say, I'm standing. Like, you know, so these are really good answers. Like, what are you doing? Standing. <laughs> what are you doing? Sitting. Right? So this is a good starting point. We can say, I'm just standing. Right? Or I'm still standing. Is that a song? That's a little different. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So, yen is to stay. Let's just stick with this. Han. 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 E han. E han. E han. E han. Han. So we also get a little bit of some clinket math here. Zero and zero is zero. So there's nothing there. Just han. I and zero is e. That's what pushes that that vowel to go long. Ha plus zero is just ha. Just things to look at. Okay. This is to eat. And not just not to eat the sandwich, not to eat the spaghetti, not to eat the fish. This is just eating. So we have locked up the object with at. Eating something. But it would always translate as just eating. I'm just eating. I'm eating this. I'm eating that. I'm eating whatever. At ha, 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 at ha,
So when the at is there, that just means I'm eating. I'm eating, you're eating, he or she is eating. You could like substitute at for something else. Like so if the at just goes to third person, that means I'm eating it. Okay. Right? So I'd say, <laughs> what is he or she doing? <laughs> eating it. <laughs> I'm eating it. And you can also, in that case, put some noun in front of it, and that's what you're eating. Chips. Uh, if you're, that's what you do, right? Um, so yeah, so, but the, when the at is there, locks it up kind of changes the meaning a little bit. This one, uh, it, this, it does just mean to be drinking, but it also, usually most people would interpret that as, oh, he's drinking, right? <laughs> so just, just know that. At dinner. So the at is very powerful. It's just something. Right? All it means is something. But at dinner means drink itself in. <laughs> right? And like at sagu. And at sagu is like uh, something that makes you happy. <laughs> it looks like that sech for. Okay. At dinner. At dinner. At dinner. At idina. At idina. At Khadana. At Khadana. At So in the Clinkett math world, you got to pay attention to whether or not there's consonants. Right? There is a consonant in this classifier. So because of that, you get Idana. It stays short. It doesn't go long. So you get Da, Ida, Khada. And same thing, the at could go away. Heen, heen dana, he or she's drinking water. Heen idana, you're drinking water. Heen chadana, I'm drinking water. Right, but we're gonna, we'll get to the objects in the next chapter. Right now we're focusing on that subject. And, and so then these can be pluralized too, but we're just focusing on the singular. So sometimes you have tea or coffee. And so you're going to shook that. <coughs> so we can see there, it's especially hot liquids. A shook. A shook. A shook. A shook. A shook. A shook. And then we're going to have to pick berries. This verb root. Uh, has to do with carrying things in a container. That's what it has to do with. So you get the in, and there's some different verbs. You know, when, when you get to the carrying verbs, you'll see to carry water, to carry a, a bucket of berries. Those are some things that you would be specifying. Uh, but in this case, uh, at in just means to, to pick berries. At in. At in. At in. At in. At in. At e in. At e in. At e in. At ha in. At ha in. At ha in. And so it gets tricky because it could sound like at ha in, like with food, right? And so at ha in. Uh, a lot of it has to do with sort of where your spaces are, how close things are. Ha in, keeping those things close together, watching your tone. So this is all low. You can see it all low tone right there. Okay. There's two ways to cook. Uh, there's one where you're going to, and it could be interpreted two ways. One could be I'm cooking for myself, and the other could be I'm cooking so that we can eat this right now. We're going to eat it immediately, as opposed to I'm going to cook it, and then we're all going to sit around and, and sort of, or we're going to eat it later or something, right? At gasi. 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 So these are all in these sets of three, right? So you should be going through, just practicing these. You've got, you've got a month off. 
but you've got a month to practice, right? So you should have all you should have all these verbs really down by the time we come back together in January. And so this is just generally just cooking. At sa'i, at sa'i, at sa'i, at isa'i, at isa'i, at chasa'i, at chasa'i, at I would use this one over the gasa'i myself. It's just a little bit easier to stick with this and not have this other concept on top of it. Okay, so cutting something, not just cutting, right? Because there's ways you can add an object in here to cut it, but this is just cutting, right? So the focus here as we do this chapter is on the verb root and what it looks like when you start changing the subject. Dehosh. Dehosh. So there's there's two ways you can get rid of the objects. Because most of these, the lot of these have an object in them. And you usually use them with an object. Um, there's two ways to do that. One is some of them you can add at. And then that just locks it up. Atcha and atdena. For a lot of the verbs, it had to do with doing something to some, doing, doing something to something else. Mm -hmm. The object goes away and it goes plus d. Okay. So it's, the plus d in the classifier is usually when you're doing something. The subject is doing something to themselves. But there's another case where you're just kicking the object out. So instead of cutting it, so you'd say, achash, so that's minus d. And you'd say, e ichash, chachash. That's how you'd say if I'm cutting it. But drinking it isn't, you're not doing something to the it. No, it's, it's more like, because it's not about what you're doing to it, it's about the drinking and the eating, okay. right? Gotcha. So if chewing on it, that's different than eating it. Dachash. Okay. Okay, sweeping. Uh, so this one, so heat is to sweep. This is an act verb. Um, oops, I got act in there twice. Uh, but this one, it gets this KW. So some of them are going to get this other little sort of repetitive suffix. And what that means is it's something I'm going to do, but it requires a whole bunch of little motions. It's a whole bunch of little motions in one, right? Okay, so that's sweeping. Uh, probably out of time. So this, this is another sort of mind cruncher, right, to just keep pushing these verbs, but the big thing is like finding ways to use these, doing activities, doing games, and, and just practice, sometimes just practicing them, but also as you sort of do these things, if you ever, unless you don't sweep floors, um, then to just try and remember, oh, what was that one for, you know, and then some of them, they're not going to change a whole lot. Some of them will, because they'll usually say, cutting it. Because you usually don't say, I'm cutting, right? I'm going to cut today, right? <laughs> but it's more like, you know, I'm going to cut this thing or I'm going to cut that thing. And then, so the goal is to sort of focus on subjects and action, then focus on objects and subjects and action, or just objects and usually states. And then later we start manipulating these things like crazy. Like, you know, like, I heard you, or I heard you, you heard me, and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a weird verb because I said, I was working with George, and I said, how do you say, like, uh, he heard it? And then he used the verb for, like, to herd cattle. Oh. I was like, it's, is that? Oh, it's like, okay, no, yeah, I get it. So it's going. Okay. Okay. And it's cheese. Thank you, Aku. Yeah, yeah, he's the cut you on. When I am here to eat it, I think it's your tongue. I'm to a good kind of scene. Oh, I'm to a good kind of yeah,
Thank you.